Hi, guys. Hi. You come from a magazine that's called Bad Taste? Yes. It's awesome. Perfect. That's that's uh, that's that's it's Jackson's yeah. first exactly. film, one of his first films. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because I remember the video cover. It's <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, Julius, this movie is based on an original concept by J.J. Abrams. Did you guys uh, talk about that? Did he tell you how he visioned the movie, or did he let you free? Yeah, we we had lots of discussions. I, I was uh, uh, brought on uh, to direct the film. Uh, I I had discussions with JJ about several projects, and and uh, you know I read one of them was Oval, and I read it and was like, this is the one I want to make because it's reminded me so much of uh, Indiana Jones, but on acid. And, uh, and it was completely bonkers. And, I, and I, I, what I really uh, admired about the script is there was, not only there was this really great, intense action and, and sci-fi horror stuff, but there's a lot of character stuff, so there's a lot of emotion. So that I, I felt like I could, that could play to my strengths. I could, I could you know, cast a great bunch of actors and, and we could have um, a, a real fun time like shaping it and, 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 and making it um, great. So, um, and JJ was, you know, he was, uh, he was interested in that as well. Like he was, um, you know, obviously the, the action had to be cool and we had to figure that out. But for him it was like, how do we how do we make the audience love these characters? How, he's always talks about like getting the audience to lean in. So when when you're uh, when you're in the, the the big third third act climax and you and and you're sort of um, following our heroes, you got to be behind them. You got to love them, and uh, and that's how you get them to lean in. And um, and so we spent a lot of time getting that right. Pilou, you mm. play the villain again. <laughs> yeah. So how was this time That's different for you? Was <laughs> it different for you this time? It's always different. Each character is different. If I reproduce the same role, then I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have a very boring career, <laughs> you know. Um, for me, it's always very important that you find something human in the villains. You find something likable, something charming, something sweet, something where you understand them. Um, I just want to answer the other question as well because I remember one of the days that JJ was on set. That was the scene I had when I was doing with Matilde, where he knocks on the door and he goes in there and they have a little, very interesting meeting. And I remember JJ had one note, which wasn't even a note, it was more like a comment. And he just came up and he was very good at letting Julius do everything. He was actually just sitting there enjoying himself because I feel he didn't have the responsibility, <laughs> yeah, you know. He was he was a, it was a, he was a freebie, and he came up and he said, "I have one comment. You're such a fucking idiot." And then he left. <laughs> that was to me. <laughs> That's what he said about Bafna. You're such Why? a fucking idiot. And then he left because I'm a douche. I'm an, I'm a very bad evil man in that film. He said it with a smile, and it was, he was being funny. But I just remember that that was my only. <laughs> conversation with JJ about the character. <laughs> He's such a fucking idiot. <laughs> so the actors before told me about the prosthetic use <clears throat> yes. on the movie, so I was wondering how, as, an, as a director, yes. why that choice and how did that work for you as an actor? Because remembering, you know, like the lab yeah. battle scene. Yeah. Well, I, I chose, I chose a, uh, you know, to go for um, prosthetics over the effects because I wanted it to feel as visceral uh, um, for the audience as possible and you know I wanted them to feel the texture and and, and uh, you know uh, for me it's also just very selfishly wanting to give the actor as much to work with as possible you know when they're when they just got the dots on them um, it's then they don't really know what it's going to look like either they look in the mirror and they see dots they don't and then you try, try and explain them yeah it's going to be kind of like this but if it's there and they can, f they see it, they know, and they know how to, and, and it empowers the actor. It makes them, uh, it makes them feel much more at ease and a lot, and, and in control of what they what they're going to be presenting on screen. Um, and you know, the only downside of it is like you got to sit in the chair for five hours. Yeah, uh, I can uh, sign to that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it's also fun because you you get. I remember one specific scene. At one point, I have something done with my face, as you can see in the poster. Something happens to my character. 
and I thought it would be, we thought it would be funny that we, 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 I would be in makeup, but I would hide how it looked. And then we could do the scene because we have a reaction shot where people see it for the first time, how his face is so fucked up. And I remember hiding it, hiding it, hiding it. And we shot, you remember, then we shot the reaction shots first without the, the, my colleagues had seen me. So when I turned around, they would see it for the first time and you would give it and you would get the reaction you wanted because it looked so over the top in the best possible way. Just a super last quick question yeah. for those time. fans yeah. who are still wondering. This is not a Cloverfield movie? No, it's not a Cloverfield movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>